Morning. Sunday morning. Cheers. I'm just uh, rubbing out some number 27 from McLellan's. I popped a 100 gram tin last night and I transferred some of it into this 50 gram tin, which will stay on my desk so it'll dry out a little bit. Um, I'm sure it'll gain a little bit of, a little bit more body. Um, although, as I smoked th through the bowl, it got really quite rich on the, in the second half of the bowl. Um, but the first half was really smooth and easy, perfect for a morning smoke, very light, very mild. So I'm just loading maybe a third of a bowl. I'm not doing a full bowl right now. Just a short smoke. And I'm going to be smoking it in a gaffer taped LCS. Uh, quite an old one, one of my early pipes. But it was, it used to be my daily go-to pipe in the days before I had my Rosebud and, and the 626 and stuff like that. So it's in the very early days. Got a preformed stem, but and I haven't even bothered funneling. Oh, I did actually, it looks like I have done it at some point. I think uh, when I rediscovered this uh, a few weeks ago in my drawer, literally haven't smoked this in, till then I hadn't smoked it in a couple of years. Um, and it was languishing in the back of the drawer, I'd forgotten about it, but um, I've been smoking it a fair bit since then. And um, I'm kind of just really exploring with it to see which pipe, which tobacco smokes best in it. Um, I mean, this would have been before I was using all it Golden's, all it comes uh, Sunday morning, before I was using OGS um, as my go-to tobacco. So I would have been smoking Vapors, um, McClellan, Virginias, uh, that kind of thing. Uh, probably a bit of uh, It's Sunday morning, I haven't slept very much. I'd never sleep well on Saturday night. Uh, and last night was no different. After London calling, I went to bed pretty late. Um, and I'd, I think I woke up the first time already, like two, three hours afterwards. The problem is that I sleep on Saturday afternoon, usually fall asleep. And, that kills the night's sleep. But, you know, it's the weekend and Saturday is a day of rest, so that's what I do, rest. Amongst other things. As you can see, my table is strewn with sandpaper. I've just finished sanding this pipe. Got a nice patch of thick walls, nice uh, saddle, a bit of, uh, nice bit of ebonite. It's the traditional green, bl uh, red, black, but it's got very nice markings on it. So I'm looking forward to seeing the results. Very tight green. Um, and it's probably sold. As I mentioned last night, I have somebody who's uh, basically booked it, um, but obviously not finalized until it's finished. Shed some light on the matter. Wife's birthday today, so I'm gonna have to do something about that. I did order her a present, but it hasn't arrived. I hope I haven't been scammed. I ordered her a watch a few days ago. 
she wanted to get a watch which uh, went with her outfit for my daughter's wedding. So I got her a uh, Michael Kors. She has a whole bunch of Michael Kors watches. I think I've bought them all over the years, different events, different celebrations. When my daughter got married uh, seven or so years ago, I bought her a stainless steel Michael Kors, a very nice one, very dressy one. She's not into high grade watches. I think because, you know, fashions change and they need to go with outfits and stuff like that and you can't afford to have a watch per outfit, can you? Um, if you're gonna buy high grade watches. So Michael Kors is a, a pretty good price point. And you can get them new very reasonably if you search online. But I hope going cheap didn't mean that I bought it from a dodgy website. I did do a trust pilot uh, sort of check on it and it came back as very good. So. So hopefully it's all kosher, and uh, we'll get that maybe tomorrow, hopefully. The tag that I showed last night, I did a return this morning, and the eBay's accepted the return, sent me a return slip, so that's going to go off tomorrow. Hopefully Tuesday a new Seiko arrives. Well, new to me anyway. It's a used one, but I still need to find out whether there is a fake market on Seikos. I, I imagine there must be on, on things like uh, Grand Seiko and stuff like that. Although I haven't really heard that there is a market, a, a fake market for Grand Seikos. It's really only for, the, it seems to be mostly for the Swiss brands. Of course, Rolex, obviously, and Audemars, Piguet, Patek, um, Tag. There's so many tags, even though tags are at the cheaper end. <coughs> although their prices are going up, but so many fakes out there. Unbelievable. I am conscious of the fact that I've been talking watches a little bit more than you might expect. I have, um, you know, kind of resurrected my interest Although I've always been, I've had I've been on a slow boil, if you like, on a simmer with watches for probably about 30 years. There was a period when, uh, probably about 15, 20 years ago, when I was in it seriously in it, I, was, I had several tags, and in those days there were no fakes. Um, and, I mean, I didn't have several tags at one time. I, um, if I bought one, then sold it and bought another one, that kind of thing. probably sold the last one that I had when I was really struggling financially. I was between jobs and uh, thankfully I've never really been out of work for any length of time. I remember one time when, uh, I have said this before, but we're chatting, so we'll have a chat. I remember one time I was working in a real estate place I'd worked there for five years and uh, my boss at the time uh, was looking to sell the business. He was into other things, he was making money elsewhere. So he asked me if I'd be interested. I said, yeah, sure. But I was a working man on a wage. I didn't have money behind me as such and I, he knew that. And he, when he came to me, he obviously came to me knowing that. So he wasn't expecting me to make any major down payment, but we came to an agreement, um, a, a payment program. Um, he's somebody that obviously I'd, I'd worked for for a good few years and we'd become pretty, you know, we had a good working relationship. So we'd had a handshake agreement on, sell, on me buying the business and basically paying him off over a period of time.
and then out of the blue, I was walking down to work one morning and I see him walking up the road. I'd parked up the road because that was the nearest parking. He was at the top of the road and at the shop where we worked, the real estate office was at the bottom of the road. And I see him walking up and that's something he, I, I, I would never see him do that. You know, he'd never come and meet me walking up the street. It just wouldn't be a thing he'd do. So it, it, it already kind of got the hairs on the back of my neck sticking up. Anyway, he said, let's go back to your car, let's have a chat. <laughs> never a good sign. Anyway, he said that um, he's found a buyer or somebody made him an offer on the business, which included the sale of a couple of properties as well. And it was an offer he just couldn't refuse. And he felt very bad about it because we'd had a handshake deal. Nothing signed on paper, but to him, a handshake did mean something. And uh, he did respect that, but nevertheless, he was being offered money rather than me paying him over a period, extended period of time. He was being offered a cash purchase. And to be honest, I was quite happy with that. Um, it, it made sense to me. I didn't want him to lose out on the deal. So we're walking back to the office and then he hits me with a bombshell. Part of the purchase agreement is that he fires me that day, there and then. No notice. So that certainly hit me in the gut. And he writes me out a check for four weeks pay. And asked me to sign a disclaimer. I was very green at the time. I did not have as much sort of legal nous as perhaps I've learned over the years since then. And I signed the undertaking not to, not to sue him or not to have any legal issues or whatever. And he handed me over a check of four weeks pay. And to me at the time, I thought, well, at least I'm getting four weeks pay. Uh, really and truly, it was unfair dismissal, and um, you know there could have been a case. Um, I wouldn't necessarily have done it, but there was at least a case for it. Anyway, I was out of a job. I went home. And the very next day, I went to the job centre to the to the unemployment office, signed on to get the welfare payments which is not something I was interested in really, but I had no choice. I had a young family at the time. I had recently got married. But um, the following day, I went to a guy that in those days, um, to start a company, you'd have to go to a company, uh, to a, a, a business that would sell you a company name, a limited company or an LLC, as you might call it in America. The very next day, I opened a, a company, a property company, a real estate office. I wrote to as many people as I could think of, and I was in business within a few days. I had clients. And that business lasted, I think it was about 15 years. And I never went back to the job center. I never ended up claiming that unemployment benefit. Um, I did have help. Um, there was a guy, a friend, a childhood friend that I'd known for years who had a, an office in, um, in, sta in, um, in the place, in the area where I, near I live, where I lived. And he offered me a room for initially free and then at a very low rent so I could start have a base, have a business. And um, I went on from there. I had clients very quickly. about somewhere between 12 and 15 years I started getting into photography initially as a hobby as you'd expect and then people started to ask me to do more and more photography work and eventually the photography income was overshadowing the, the real estate management I wasn't buying properties myself I was looking after other people's property and um, perhaps I, I should have really been more um, entrepreneurial, you know, but I wasn't. And anyway, in the end, I sold the business and went into photography, which also lasted me about 20 years, 15, 20 years. And then eventually, pipe making, which again, started as a hobby. And now is work.
here we are today. Pipe 912. Bit of a journey, eh? I can't remember how I got onto that. Well, we were talking about watches. How did I get from that to work? I haven't the foggiest idea. Oh, because I was talking about not having the income and having to. So that's why I probably at that time I sold the, the tag watch. <laughs> Billy Connolly lives again. Some of you might understand that. Anyway, I did start the watch channel a couple of weeks ago, and there are already three videos up on there. But I'm still undecided whether I should keep it or not. I've got about 10 subscribers, and that's without any shout outs, without any giveaways, without anything like that. It's just on content and putting on a few tags, stuff like that. It's just that I've got to think about whether I want to put the time into it, really. The, uh, the, the the YouTube channel here, this one, has evolved over a period of 10 years. And, um, you know, my way of doing videos, as I've mentioned many times, is, is just literally pressing the record button. No production value, no lighting, no editing, no nothing. Yeah, and that's how I've managed to do it, how I've managed to have to amass as many videos on my channel as I have, without it actually taking too much of my time away from whatever else I'm doing. When it comes to watches, it's a different story because I don't work in watches, it's my hobby, but to sit and talk about it for 15-20 minutes, maybe reviewing a watch or doing a box opening and stuff like that, um, it's time. But, you know, it's good to take time out away from work as well. So I haven't really come to a decision on that. Hence, I've been talking about watches on this channel as well. And I've been thinking whether or not this channel should be more of a um, a channel of, of my day, in other words, not just pipe making, it's just whatever I'm involved in, whatever interests me. So it becomes less focused solely on pipes, but it can also include things like watches. It's unlikely to include much else, although it includes things like my holidays and that kind of stuff, but my vacation time. But uh, it's mostly pipes, obviously, and it will continue to be mostly pipes, but I have to decide whether or not I want to muddy the water a bit and whether it will put off people if I start to do box openings on watches, do watch reviews and things like that. I'd be interested in your feedback on that. If you're a, a, a viewer or lurker and you're really quite opinionated about it and you really want to have just pipes, please leave a comment. Um, I really want to hear from as many people as possible about that so I can get some kind of feel for, the, for that, whether it would bother people whether it would bother you if I had watch content in there as well. Because if I, if I could do it on this channel, it just saves me the time of switching channels. And um, although that in itself is not a lot of time, but you've got to keep track of where you're up to. I was trying to search a video the other day and I realized I couldn't find it because it was in my history on the other channel. So it's not a huge issue, not a huge time saver, but I think my mind will be a lot more... Um, sort of look calmer and not having to worry about two different channels. It's just it makes life less complicated, essentially. The upside of having a separate channel is that um, obviously that you know there are going to be some people who are not happy about having the pipe issue sort of muddied. And I myself commented about it recently on a video um, talking about pipe channels sort of sticking to pipe channels. Uh, sticking to pipe content so that plays on my mind as well because it's a bit hypocritical of me to to then sort of start doing other things on my channel so for me that's probably the biggest reason why I may not um, do watch stuff on this channel at least not a lot of you know proper watch videos I might talk about them occasionally but not do a box opening or reviews and things like that so I think that might be a happy medium is when I'm doing a particular focused video, 
is to do it on the other channel, but just general chat, chit chat, occasionally talk about watches, I think it's okay. But the upside of having a separate channel is that I could, if I really wanted to, if it gained any kind of traction, is I could monetize it where I can't monetize this channel. Although I've never really been about monetizing this channel. You know, it's never been that intention. But um, I say with a what channel I could go into it with that intention in mind, maybe, like I say, you know, it could be a distraction, I don't know. I, I have to think about it anyway. But your feedback would be appreciated. Master Clone or Homage watch. Well, I think that's all she wrote for today. I'm going to get on with staining this and uh, hopefully polish it up a little bit later on today. I'm going to love you and leave you. Have a great day. Catch you on the next one.